This is Catherine Doverly, the answer lady. Today I'd like to knit some basket weave using the knitting machine. I've been using and enjoying basket weave in designs lately, and this will make it very clear and easy how you can do it too. Basket weave is a combination of knit stitches and purl stitches, but instead of every other one, as we do for ribbing or for seed stitch, it's in blocks of knits and purls. Let's have a look. All right, you can see our basket weave beginning to form. This is a three stitch by three stitch pattern. Three knits, well, three purls, three knits, three purls, three knits. There's an additional stitch on each end that will be used for seaming that is not part of the pattern. And I've done four rows in this segment because I figured out that that was approximately going to create a square looking basket weave, which was my goal. It might be different depending on the effect you wanted and the gauge of yarn you're getting, or the gauge of stitch you're getting. Now we are ready. These are what the machine knits. These are what I've reformed. This is also what you would get if I transferred these stitches to the river. So if you're using the river, this is the time to transfer these three to the river, and these three which will be on the river would come back to the main bed, and these three would go to the river, and these would come back to the main bed. These end two will have stayed on the main bed no matter what. Now it's time to knit four rows. In this case, I'm going to reform with a latch tool. So I'm leaving everything on the main bed. Knit, two, three, four. Now I have eight rows here all alike, and I'm going to ladder down the first four. One, two, three, four. So I put my tool in there, drop it, and reform it. From the viewpoint of how the knitting bed knits, I'm creating purl stitches because I'm on the back side. As you know, purls are simply the opposite of knits, so it's going to depend on your perspective what you call them. We're latching up. Usually you use a latch tool for this. I had handy this tool, which is really a rug tool, and it's exactly like a latch tool, but a little bit more robust. It's only good on a bulky machine, but this is a bulky machine. All right, that's my first square completed. These were knits down here, pearls up here, so I'm going to leave them alone because they're correct right now. Ready to drop these. And we'll latch them up. Let me talk for a little bit about how I'm laddering down the stitches. It's just a shortcut. You could do it like this. One, two, three, four. But it's a lot faster to find loop number five, stick your tool in it, and give a tug to the fabric, as you have already seen. There are my squares forming up nicely. We're going to leave this and this alone because they're for our seam. Let's do this again. Now this time, these are correct, and we're going to work on the next three. So when you're working basket weave, your blocks of stitches alternate all the way up the work. It's a little bit tedious at times. But you can do it in small batches. Tell yourself you'll do 20 rows and then take a break, something like that. And the effect is very, very nice. Basket weave doesn't roll very much, even at the edges, because of the alternating. At the very edge, it may roll just a little because four rows is enough to start a little bit of a ripple. But it's not bad. These were okay. These need to be changed. 
So this makes an excellent scarf as well as a beautiful sweater. It's nice on a hat too. There's really not much you cannot do with it because unlike ribbing, which is knit one, purl one in columns, these blocks of stitches don't cause the fabric to pull in noticeably. So it has almost the identical gauge to stockinette. Therefore, you could knit a sweater in a basic design that you've used before and change to basket weave for part of it near the hem or near the uh, collar to make a yoke look and not have to change the pattern. It's forming up. Let's talk once more about if I were using a river. These would have knitted last time on the main bed, so now they go to the river. These would be on the river, they'd come back to the main bed, and so on. Let's knit four more rows and see what we get. These were reformed last time, so they should stay this time, and it should be the first three that we do. All right, I ran down one bar too far. One, two, three, four is correct. This one is not. So if in that case, I need to re-knit this stitch in the way it was originally knitted. That will happen to you from time to time. No cause for alarm. We can fix it as you just saw. I'm going to work across all of these. One more stitch in this section. And then these three left alone and these three altered and I'll show you when I get done. Isn't that pretty? Very simple to do, a little bit time consuming, but well worth it.